For climbing, it's an interesting beast. And, I, and, and Cam, I wanna pose a, a question to you and just gonna help set up this answer. When you see someone buckling on a climb, what are some of the typical, if you were racing them and they were in front of you, what would be the hallmarks that are letting you know that, hey, I think this person's fatiguing out here, it now might be a good idea for me, yes. might be a good idea for me to attack. What, what would you see? What, um, just... they, they look like they're making love to the bike. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of upper body movement. There's a lot of saliva. There's a, probably an inability to get out of the saddle. They keep getting up and getting back down. Yep. Um, so that's what comes to mind. Yeah, it does. And, I, and, I, and I'll throw in there then as well, you know, the bike may not even be on the oh, yeah. the correct race line. It might have a little bit more sort of movement off the you line. You don't want to be near them. You yeah. don't want to be near them. Yeah. It looks yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that is a, a complete breakdown in stabilization through the core. Right. Um, they're probably, uh, you know, we all want to pedal in these nice smooth circles. They're pr fatiguing out so much. Now they're really just thinking about pushing. And we're not thinking so much about that nice pedal recovery where the, where the hip flex from the hamstring are kind of working together for that sort of pull up. And as you put it, they're making love to the bike. Now they're swinging side to side. They're sort of pushing. It almost looks like they're sort of a strange humping action yes. down. And, and what's happening there is, as I said, big breakdown of st stabilization and core. The humping up and down pattern, I, I've got a few theories about it. Um, it would ink. If you lean forward as you drove down, it would increase the length tension, improve the length tension relationship in the hamstring, potentially helping its force output in such a fatigable state. So I think that's part of it. The second part of it is the trunk stabilizers have just completely blown out that when they push down with uh, one leg, they don't have like a counter torque to produce on their body to stop them swinging over this side if they're pushing on their right leg, for example, and then vice versa. So we also need to factor in the effect of gravity, particularly on a steeper hill. As it gets steeper and steeper, what's stopping you falling off the back of the bike other than being clipped in the pedals? Well, it's core musculature in the, the ventral core, um, which is keeping you crowded over that bike. You know, if that starts to fade, then we're gonna look a little bit funny on the bike when we climb. Secondly, we have the option and we tend to see it more, people will be out of saddle a little bit more when they're climbing under fatigue conditions, particularly if the hill gets quite steep. So now we're bringing in way more trunk and stability demands around the spine and the hip and the pelvis. We're actually now using our arms a little bit. So we have this, this fairly different beast than what we would be experiencing on the flat because on the flat, the bike kind of wants to keep rolling to a degree once we get it up to speed. On the hill, the, the bike doesn't like rolling because it wants to roll back the other way. And that's why it's, you know, we have to work pretty hard. We, we're working more against the force of gravity than we were uh, when we were um, riding on the flat. So my recommendation to those of you who, who want to get better at climbing and, and you identify someone who has a bit of saddle movement and you, and you tend to sort of move and flap around a little bit, still focus in on things like the leg press, the lunge, and the squat type patterns. And depending on where you're on the continuum of beginner to advance, will dictate sort of how heavy you go and the advanced types of variations of those uh, movements you do. The thing I would suggest you need to bring in is something that will train the obliques, the ventral, uh, ventral core, so like the rectus abdominis, six pack muscle, uh, and the hip flexor muscles. Because when they fatigue out on a hill is incredibly noticeable and pedaling efficiently, pedaling efficiency just drops out. And then people look really unwell on the bike and they're sort of leafing across the road. So stick to your bread and butter, your squat type, your lunge type, and your leg press type pattern is a good idea. Bring in a core exercise. And those of you who've been programmed by me or getting programmed by me, you've looked at some of the RCA strength modules, um, I like bringing in things like uh, V-sits work quite well, dead bugs, um, Swiss ball passovers, that one where you sort of pass the ball to your, your feet and you, then you sort of pike out and then you pass it back and you repeat. Hanging knee raises, I love um, giving to my advanced people. Weighted hanging knee raises, put some ankle weights on. We're really conditioning the core along with the hip flexor with these exercises that I've mentioned. So I, I like to get economical with that. Um, I also like bringing in patterns that challenge an abil a person's ability to lean side to side. So again, those of you getting programmed, but many have looked at programs that I've um, been a part of and supported through the RCA strength module, is you'll see there's things in there like side planks, you know, um, where I'm trying to get you used to resisting the concept of lateral flexion and hip abduction uh, at the uh, 
at hip AD duction at the hip, but it's more the lateral flexion of the spine. I'm trying to get you used to limiting because it's that lateral flexion what we see when people start swaying side to side. So I'm trying to strengthen up these oblique muscles. So to put a, a summary in that, aside from those bread and button patterns of lunge, squat, squat and leg press, bring in a core exercise that is also conditioning the hip flexors at the same time, mm. i.e. if you're an advanced person, it you know, might be um, hanging knee raises, weighted hanging knee raises, uh, passing a, a Swiss ball between your feet and your hands. If you're in the intermediate level, you might still delve into that sort of stuff. You've done a lot of core training, bringing in like side plank positions, um, bringing in uh, V-sit medicine ball passovers. They kind of look like a Russian twist, but you actually don't rotate the body. The goal is to not rotate as you pass that medicine ball over. And then for our beginners, it's things like the side plank and the plank um, and mountain climber type exercises work really quite well for conditioning the core, the obliques and the hip flexors. So that would be the area that I'd suggest work on as well if you want to get um, better at climbing too. Right. And then I think the last one I want to add to that, so that'll take us to maybe a fifth type exercise. See if you can economize the core workout where it also has an upper body element to it. Because we, as I mentioned, you're going to be out of the saddle sometimes climbing. And here's a challenge for the viewers and listeners. Pick a hill you know, around 5% gradient or higher that is at least two kilometers long. How long can you stay out of the saddle for? Tell, you know, what areas do you feel the burn in? Is it, is it your legs, is it your core, is it your arms? It's probably everything. Um, what I'm trying to get at is after a while of doing it, and I've practiced this challenge myself of, well, how long can I stay out? You know, my triceps are burning, my shoulders are hurting, my core's hurting, mm. you know? So having something that conditions those uh, stabilizers in the trunk and the triceps and the shoulders to a degree um, in the upper body is good. So what core exercises do that as well? Well, um, doing things like, um, Example, like a, a hanging uh, knee raise, for example, with a 90 degree bent elbow. So you're conditioning the upper body as well as the hip flexor and the core. Downside is you don't get any tricep in that. So what would you do? Things like a full plank. So we've all seen the plank on the forearms. What about the, the plank on the hands? Right. Um, so then the triceps getting conditioned, you're conditioning the core the same, you can do it. Um, some people have been getting exercises prescribed by me. I've got one called the full plank uh, dumbbell or kettlebell drag. So they're in a full plank position arms straight, legs straight, and they have to grab a dumbbell from this side and drag it to the other side, change hands, oh, cool. and switch. So I'm conditioning the upper body for that outer saddle component. I'm getting the anti-rotation, anti-flexion um, component through the kettlebell drag. And as long as I, um, and the hip flexors are active in a plank as well. And then if I bring in like a side plank as well, I've kind of like got this nice packaged up core workout to help with those climbing demands. That's very cool. What about battle ropes? I, is that more sprinting? <laughs> I've seen you do the battle yeah, ropes with I, some of your uh, athletes. I, I do do the battle ropes to help with sprinting. It's okay. it's, it's ballistic. It's explosive. Um, it's that outer saddle. The core needs to be fairly stable, but then the the hands are moving. I do like the sideways battle ropes, and I do like a sagittal uh, plain one as well. So, yeah, if you're at the advanced point and you're like, hey, I do a lot of like outer saddle. Um, sprinting work, or that's how quickly I can climb. Uh, yeah, you might, and your advanced training, you, you might bring in the battle ropes, you know, anchor down that core and give it a hit. That would certainly condition the arms, uh, biceps and triceps getting involved in it as well. So yeah, I, I got no beef with that. As I said, I prescribed a lot for my um, sprinters as well. And I, I think there's a video getting around of a couple of my sprint guys giving it a hit. Mm -hmm.